2020 has been a wild year to say the least for everybody, including the telecommunication industry. But in this video today, I am not gonna be talking about the unprecedented pandemic or COVID-19. I'm just going over the top five most interesting moments that happened in the world of cell phones this year. So sit back, relax, and have a good time. If you haven't yet, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and of course, turn on the notifications. I come out with new videos every Wednesday and Friday, and I go live every Monday afternoon here on Whistle Out TV, and I'd love for you to join me. I'm going over the top five moments from the telecommunication world this year. We're counting down from five, starting with five. The first thing I'm going over is Galaxy Unpacked. Now, Normally I wouldn't be going over Galaxy Unpacked for a review of the last year because it happens every year. It's not that interesting. We know new phones are gonna be released every year at the beginning of the year for Samsung, at the end of the year for Apple. But the reason I wanna go over Galaxy Unpacked is because this was potentially the last major tech event that happened in 2020 before the pandemic hit. I am not going to be talking about the unprecedented pandemic or COVID-19. And I think that's pretty substantial considering the rest of the events have been digital. Samsung Galaxy Unpacked was really the last event many people attended in person, including myself. And I also remember being a little freaked out because it hadn't really gotten real yet. Samsung had sent out an email beforehand saying, we'll have hand sanitizer set up. Everything's fine, we're excited to see you. Three weeks later, the world shut down. But before everything shut down, we did get to see four pretty new awesome phones from Samsung, including their S20 lineup, S20, S20+, Plus, S20 Ultra, and the Galaxy Z Flip. Now this Galaxy lineup for Samsung was pretty impressive for multiple reasons, including first of their phones to film in 8K. One of the phones had 100 times digital zoom, which is just absurd and so unnecessary. Also, these were one of the first phones that had 5G ready to go to use the 5G networks that at that time weren't totally set up and really ready to go yet, but Samsung was out of the curve and ready to go with their lineup of 5G phones. Now, the last phone I wanna talk about, which kind of brings me into my second, the fourth most interesting thing to happen this year or not happen, is flip phones or foldable touchscreen phones. Samsung came out with the Galaxy Z Flip and in 2019, the talk of the town were foldable phones, and guess what? They still didn't take off this year. In fact, they fell incredibly flat. If we want to take a look at how well or how poorly foldable phones did this year, all we really need to do is take a look at the Z Flip. The Z Flip cost about $1,400. <sighs> that is so much money for not a lot of phone. If we want to put it in perspective, the S20 Ultra, which is the best lineup for the Samsung Galaxy brand you can get right now, the most high-end phone on the market for Androids, also cost $1,400. And it comes with way more than just being able to fold like the Z Flip does. So I was expecting to see a little bit more innovation in terms of foldable phones this year, but it did not happen. And honestly, I don't foresee it happening anytime soon. The third thing, counting down from five, number three, that was really big this year was 5G rollouts. Now I kind of briefly mentioned this a little bit before with the Ultra devices or the S20 devices, but let's really dig into 5G for a second here. In 2019, it was coming around and 2020 hit and it was full force for every carrier. T-Mobile, Verizon, and AT&T, and at the time, Sprint were all vying for the number one 5G spot. But now we only have three carriers, and if we wanna take a look at the numbers, Verizon has the fastest 5G, but not the most. T-Mobile has the most, but not the fastest, and AT&T is somewhere in the middle. They have a decent amount, and it's decent speeds. Also along the lines of 5G was the fact that there were a ton, a ton, of 5G phones released this year. If you had asked me in February or March if it was worth it to buy a 5G phone, I would have said no. And if you had asked me if I was going to buy a 5G phone in March, I would have said heck no, but 
Here I am with a 5G phone using 5G pretty much every day here in my small city here in Southern California. So 5G has really taken off and it's been pretty much accessible for the average consumer, which is the second thing. The absolute ridiculous amount of high-end budget phones that were released this year. If you take a look at every major manufacturer for cell phones in this country, Almost every single one of them made a budget version of their high-end phones. So we saw with the downturn in the economy, we saw these companies, whether or not they were planning on releasing these phones, they still released budget-friendly phones. For instance, the iPhone 12 came out, although it is very expensive. The iPhone 12 mini is less than $700. You can get a brand new iPhone for less than $700. And that's not super budget for some people, but for the market for cell phones in general, that's a really awesome price for a brand new cell phone, especially from Apple. Now we also want to take a look at Motorola at TLC or TCL. Not TLC the band, TCL, the cell phone electronics company. We take a look at Google. We take a look at literally Motorola, I already said that, but every single major manufacturer made a budget friendly high-end cell phone for the average consumer this year and each one of their new budget friendly phones came with 5g which made it, which now makes it super easy for the average person to break into 5g and experience this super quick internet most of the time for themselves and i think that's really impressive and a really interesting thing to know as we review everything telecommunication in the last year now the last thing i want to cover and it arguably is the most important thing if we're looking at a review of 2020 is the Sprint and T-Mobile merger. That was a billion dollar creation that happened with multiple court hearings, with multiple government entities involved with the com combining of these two major corporations. And after years and years of struggling to make it happen, it finally happened. And Depending on who you ask, it's a good thing or it's a horrible thing. Some people are not looking forward to the ramifications of the merger. So far though, it really hasn't presented to be too much of a problem. T-Mobile has committed to keeping their prices down. They even created budget-friendly cell phone plans. And so far, only Sprint customers, they aren't, this isn't a bad thing for Sprint customers. This is a great thing because now if Sprint customers roam outside of their network, which was the smallest network in the country, they can now use T-Mobile's network as a backup. Now, I can't really say the same thing for T-Mobile customers. If T-Mobile customers roam outside of their coverage, they don't get to use Sprint. So it's not really an even scenario for these two customers types who came together in this merger, but it's still a really big deal considering it took four major carriers down to three, decreased the competition, but it also added a new player in the game, Dish. Dish Network, not normally a cell phone company, is vying to be the fourth major cell phone carrier in the country. And although that did not happen this year, they only have bought up a few small cell phone carriers to bring into their, their fold, the Dish family. Uh, they do have a few years to figure out their whole process and become an actual cell phone carrier. And we'll see that happen in the next few years. But I would be remiss if I did not say how big of a deal this merger was. Now I have a lot more to say on this merger subject, but it has to do with the future of this merger and what it will look like in the upcoming year. And guess what? I have a whole new video coming out about my predictions for telecommunication for 2021. But that's it for my review of 2020. Tell me what did I miss? What was your favorite cell phone moment this year? I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching Whistle Out TV. I'm Sherry Riggs.